Two years ago, I reviewed seven of the most popular security camera systems on the market, and I concluded that Unify Protect was the most user-friendly option available with the downsides of high cost and poor camera compatibility. But since then, Unify has made some big changes, including the release of their more affordable G5 lineup of cameras. And just last week, Unify announced probably their biggest change ever, which is the ability to add OnVIF compliant third-party cameras into Unify Protect without any additional licenses or fees. So it's definitely time to revisit that review. And in this video, I'll be testing every camera that Unify currently sells and covering some of Unify Protect's best and most important features to help you figure out if a Unify camera system is right for you or your business. To start out, let's take a quick look at all the cameras that Unify currently sells and try to make some sense out of their kind of confusing naming system. First are their oldest and cheapest cameras, which are the G3 lineup, and the only ones that are still for sale are the $79 G3 Flex and the $79 G3 Instant. And while the low price tag might be tempting, you probably shouldn't buy either of these, because the G3 lineup doesn't support smart detections, so you won't be able to have person and vehicle detection, and that's one of Unify Protect's best features. After that are the G4 cameras, which are a little bit older, but are part of Unify's more premium lineup, and they have the price tags to match. The G4 cameras do have smart person, vehicle, and animal detection, and are generally really well built with mostly metal construction. And then you've got the newer G5 cameras, which as I said before, are designed to be a more affordable entry point into Unify Protect. And like the G4 lineup, the G5 cameras also have smart person, vehicle, and animal detections, but the build quality is definitely cheaper with mostly plastic construction, so it's gonna be interesting to see how they perform when compared to the older, more expensive G4 lineup. And last are the cameras with the AI distinction, which come with a very premium price tag and the same high build quality and metal construction of the G4 lineup, but they also have Unify's advanced smart detections, which adds facial recognition and license plate reading in addition to the standard person, vehicle, and animal detections. And they're also black, so that's cool. But maybe a more meaningful way to categorize these cameras is by their weather resistance and placement recommendations. So I've broken them down into three groups, which are outdoor exposed, outdoor covered, and indoor only. Starting with outdoor exposed daytime image quality, I held up a sign at 10, 25, and 50 feet to judge stationary image quality, and then I did a running test at 25 feet to judge the camera's motion handling abilities. And you can see that at 10 feet, all the cameras did a passable job, but the top performers were definitely the G4 Bullet, G4 Pro, G5 Pro, and the $2,500 AI DSLR was unsurprisingly the best. At 25 feet, the differences were much more pronounced with the lower cost G4 Instant and G5 PTZ producing pretty grainy images, while the G5 Bullet did surprisingly well and made it into the top four along with the G4 PTZ, G5 Pro, and AI DSLR. At 50 feet, I wasn't particularly impressed by any of the images except for the AI DSLR, but the top performers again were the G5 Bullet, G5 Pro, G4 PTZ, and the AI DSLR. And during the 25 foot running test, you can really see the difference in image processing on the G5 cameras versus the AI cameras. And I put the AI Pro in fourth, the G5 Bullet in third, the AI DSLR in second, and the G5 Pro in first. But you can see that the G5 lineup did a better job resolving the text, while the AI lineup did a better job preserving detail in my face. So unsurprisingly, the best performer during the day was the AI DSLR, but the G5 Pro was also a major standout, which was surprising to me since it's the most affordable of the 4K Pro lineup. And the G5 Bullet it also performed very well during the day considering its $129 price tag, and we'll talk about why that is later. I repeated all those same tests at night with both IR and color night vision, and starting with color night vision with just my carriage lights on, at 10 feet I thought that all the cameras were surprisingly bad, and the only ones that produced decent images were the AI Pro and AI DSLR. And the rest of the cameras were so lackluster that the cheapest camera, the $99 wireless G4 Instant, made it into the top four. At 25 feet, image noise was still a big problem, and with this amount of light, I was expecting the huge four-third sensor on the AI DSLR to be incredible but it was just okay. Though it still did wildly outperform the rest of the top four, which were the G4 PTZ, G5 Pro, and the AI Pro. And at 50 feet, all the cameras were pretty bad again, but the G5 turret snuck into the top four along with the G5 Pro, G4 PTZ, and the AI DSLR. And then last, as expected based on the previous two tests, the running test was a little bit of a mess, and aside from identifying the color of my clothes, none of the cameras captured any meaningful detail of the sign or my face, which again was pretty disappointing given the size of the sensor on the AI DSLR, but it did still finish in first with the G4 PTZ in second, the G5 Pro in third, and the G5 turret coming in fourth. It's also worth noting that the G5 Pro and AI Pro have an option to add on what Unify calls their Vision Enhancer to help with color night vision, but Vision Enhancer is just a fancy word for LED spotlight. And while it did help a little with color night vision, it's not magic and it's no different than adding an extra motion sensing security light to your space. 
So for color night vision, unsurprisingly, the top performer at every distance was the AI DSLR, and while the G4 PTZ, AI Pro, and G5 Pro rounded out the top four, the AI DSLR was the only one that I would seriously consider using in color night vision mode. Thankfully though, the IR performance of these cameras was quite a bit better, and at 10 feet, all the cameras captured meaningful detail, but the unusual top performers were the G5 PTZ, G5 Bullet, G4 Instant, and G5 Pro. But at 25 feet, the only camera that captured any facial detail was the G4 Pro, and the rest of the top four got rounded out by the G5 Pro, G4 Bullet, and G5 Bullet. At 50 feet, pretty much the same amount of information could be gathered by each camera, but the G4 Pro, G5 Pro, G5 PTZ, and G4 Bullet seemed slightly better than the rest. And during the 25-foot running test with infrared night vision, the best performers were the G4 Pro, G5 Pro, G4 PTZ, and the AI Pro. And that means that for infrared performance, the G5 Pro and G4 Pro took the top two spots, followed by the G5 PTZ, and very unexpectedly, the G4 Instant had the fourth best IR night vision performance. And you may have noticed that the AI DS SLR wasn't in any of these last tests at all, and that's because it doesn't have any IR LEDs or an IR filter, so it can only be used in color night vision mode, which is pretty disappointing because it seriously limits the usefulness as a license plate camera, which I think would otherwise be its main application. For each of these outdoor exposed rated cameras, I combined their daytime score with the best of their two night scores to come up with their average overall ranking, and with an average rank of 1.125, the $2,500 AI DSLR came in easily in first, followed by the $379 G5 Pro with a 2.25 average rank, then the $449 G4 Pro had a 3.875 average rank, and the $499 AI Pro was in fourth with an average rank of exactly four. But we're not quite done here because we need to talk about why the G5 Bullet performed so much better during the day than the G5 Turret, and it's all about field of view and focal length. In a picture clarity test, you should always expect a camera with a narrower field of view to outperform a wider field of view if the sensor size and resolution are the same. And here are the cameras arranged from the widest to narrowest field of view, and you can see that the AI DS SLR has just 52 degrees of horizontal field of view compared to the 110 degrees of the G5 Pro, G4 Pro, and AI Pro when zoomed all the way out, which makes their picture quality rankings even more impressive. So to try to normalize those numbers, I divided the picture quality ranking by the camera's horizontal field of view, and then I multiplied it by 100, making the G5 Pro the best camera when adjusted for field of view, the AI DSLR was in second, the G4 Pro was in third, and the AI Pro was in fourth. And last, to take cost into consideration, I multiplied the adjusted rankings by the camera's price and then I divided by 100, which made the $99 G4 Instant the highest value outdoor exposed camera, followed by the $379 G5 Pro, then the $129 G5 Bullet, and the $129 G5 Turret. The next lineup of cameras are the outdoor covered cameras that only have IPX4 weatherproofing, which are the G3 Flex, G5 Flex, G5 Dome, G4 Doorbell Pro, and AI360 camera. And starting with the daytime test at seven feet, the G5 Flex and G4 Dome were basically indistinguishable from each other. While the G3 Flex was slightly worse, but still decent, the AI360 was expectedly worse given its full panoramic field of view, but the G4 Doorbell was unexpectedly bad, especially given the favorable angle of the shot. At 15 feet, the results were exactly the same with the G5 Flex in first, the G4 Dome in second, the G3 Flex in third, the AI360 in fourth, and the G4 Doorbell Pro definitely in last place. At night, using color night vision at 15 feet, the results were exactly the same again with the G5 Flex and G5 Dome producing nearly identical images. The G3 Flex was a step down from that, the AI360 was in fourth, and the G4 Doorbell was in last. But at seven feet, for color night vision, the G4 Doorbell did do a little bit better, and while the G5 Flex and G5 Dome were still in first and second place, the G4 Doorbell made it into third, followed by the G3 Flex, and the AI360 just didn't have enough light to capture any facial detail. Just like the outdoor exposed cameras, I thought that the infrared performance of all these cameras was a lot better than their color night vision, and at 15 feet, everything was the same as normal with the G5 Flex in first, the G4 Dome in second, the G3 Flex in third, the AI360 in fourth, and the G4 Doorbell capturing by far the least amount of detail. But at seven feet with infrared, everything got flipped on its head with the G3 Flex actually having the best image, followed by the G4 doorbell, then the AI360, and then the G5 Flex and G5 Dome were actually in fourth and fifth place. But I will say that they were still pretty decent captures. And that means that for outdoor covered spaces, the G5 Flex had the best raw overall picture quality ranking, the best ranking after adjusting for field of view, and the best value when considering its $129 price tag. But the AI360 was also a very interesting option, allowing for a complete panoramic image or 
or several de-warped images. And a really cool feature of Unify Protect is the ability to add a 360 camera to the live view multiple times and then zoom in on a different area in each feed, which Unify Protect will then remember and automatically pull up each time you load your dashboard. The last group of cameras to test are the ones that are only rated for indoor usage, which are the $79 G3 Instant, the $129 G5 Dome Ultra, and the $329 AI Theta line of cameras. They use a PoE camera receiver and processing unit coupled with different lenses that are meant to be flush mounted. And I have the Wide Angle Pro, Tele Pro, and 360 Pro lenses for testing. And I ran these cameras through the same test as all the outdoor covered cameras, testing at both seven feet and 15 feet. And there was nothing really surprising about the outcome with the zoomed 4K image of the AI Theta Tele Pro lens in first, the AI Theta wide lens was in second, the G5 Dome Ultra was in third, the AI Theta 360 Pro was in fourth, and the G3 Instant was in last place for picture quality. But unfortunately, like the AI DSLR cameras, the Theta lenses don't have any infrared filters, so with all the lights off, they are basically worthless, and that meant that the G5 Dome Ultra came in first, outperforming the G3 Instant in each of the lights off tests. However, when you consider all the cameras that I've tested in this review, I don't think any of these indoor cameras cameras are specifically worth buying over their outdoor counterparts. For instance, the G3 Instant is $20 less than the G4 Instant, but with worse image quality and without smart detections. So you should definitely just get the G4 Instant instead. The G5 Dome Ultra is compact and has a vandal proof dome, but it's got a huge ethernet pigtail that isn't able to get routed at the side. So you're gonna need to drill a pretty large hole in your mounting location just to run your wires. And speaking of drilling large holes, the flush mounting system of the AI Theta cameras is theoretically cool until you realize that for the tele and wide angle lenses, that means that you can't aim them at all. So you're gonna be stuck with either a completely perpendicular wall mount or a camera pointed straight at the ground. And the other issue is that if you're not mounting in a drop ceiling, the hole that you'd need to make to get the AI Theta receiver into the ceiling would be about three times the diameter of the hole for mounting the actual camera. So that means that out of the 19 cameras that Unify sells, the top performer if you're building a premium system is definitely the $379 G5 Pro, which has 4K resolution, three times optical zoom, great build quality, and smart person, vehicle, and animal detections. It's also got a good microphone for recording audio and doing audio-based smart detections. It's got a highly visible stack status light for deterrence, and it's got that option to buy the add-on vision enhancer spotlight for color night vision. The AI Pro also had very similar image quality to the G5 Pro, and for $120 more per camera, you do get two-way audio, face detection and license plate detection, as well as a few other smart audio detections. But in most cases, the G5 Pro is a better value and it's my top recommendation for a premium system. And for outdoor exposed cameras, if you're on a budget and you can work with a lower field of view, the G5 Bullet punches way above its price tag at $129, and the G5 Turret is also a good option if you need a wider field of view. For indoor cameras, I like the G5 Flex a lot, which has really good image quality and lots of discrete mounting options like a recessed ceiling mount. And unlike the AI Theta, you still have the ability to aim the lens and you still get IR night vision, and it's only $129 per camera. And the last camera that really stuck out to me was the G4 Instant, which is their wireless option, which still had pretty good image quality, is rated for outdoor exposed mounting locations, and still has the smart detection options for just $99. And I think that anyone who's considering a Wi-Fi camera system from Ring or Nest would be much better off with a few G4 Instants recording to a CloudKey Gen 2 running Unify Protect, which gets local recording, better image quality, and a user-friendly experience with no subscriptions. And that brings me to the Unify Protect application itself, which as I said before, was my top pick for the most user-friendly NVR two years ago. And Unify has added quite a few new features since then. Starting with by far the best feature, the Smart Detections Overview, which is second to none, and the G4 and G5 series cameras not only allow you to see person and vehicle detections, but you can also use the heat map functionality to specify an area of the image, and it will only show you events from that specific area. Stepping up to the AI lineup of cameras, you can pair down the detection even further by selecting specific faces that will group together by names. And for vehicle detections, you can also select a specific vehicle color that you're looking for. And you can also search for license plates if your camera is properly positioned for that. Timeline playback is also extremely user-friendly and allows for single or multi-camera playback with both time-lapse style scrubbing and event-only viewing. Though as a longtime Blue Iris user, I thought that there were a few things missing from the Unify Protect playback window, including frame-by-frame -frame advancing, a volume volume control slider, and H.264 re-encoding for export compatibility. And I'd also love to see them add the ability to export a de-warped view of a 360 camera, but aside from those little nitpicks, I think that the vast majority of people would be blown away by how well Unify Protect works when compared to other NVRs. And the mobile app is just as user-friendly, and it's got the same time and detection style playback. It's got highly configurable rich push notifications for just about every event type you can think of, and the new alarm manager makes it easy to set up those notifications on a per-user and per-camera basis. If you 
you've got multiple sites like a home and a business or vacation properties and you want to keep an eye on all of them at the same time, Unify has also released Unify Vantage Point, which lets you add up to five separate Protect NVRs from different locations to a single shared screen where you can set up live views with cameras from each of your sites and view them all at the same time. And to run Unify Protect itself, there are more options than ever depending on the number of cameras you have and the amount of storage and redundancy that you need. With the least expensive option being the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus for $249 with a one terabyte SSD pre-installed, which has a capacity for up to 14 five megapixel cameras or eight 4K cameras. And from there, there's pretty much an option for every single number of cameras and every storage need. But depending on your requirements, you could go all the way up to the $1,999 Enterprise NVR with up to 560 megapixels of cameras available and 240 terabytes of hard drive in RAID 5 configuration. And that brings me to the last and maybe most exciting part of this video, which is OnBIF compatibility, which lets you add your third party cameras to your Unify Protect setup. And while I definitely agree that this is an awesome first step, I think the main purpose of this change is compliance for large companies that need a certain number of days of footage recorded, rather than full security camera functionality. Because the current implementation only supports video feeds and no audio, it doesn't support OnVIF motion detections, and it doesn't have OnVIF control for PTZ cameras. So it is a video recorder in its most basic sense, but that part does work. However, because Protect 5.0 is automatically detecting and adding OnVIF cameras on the same subnet, you can't choose which video stream the camera picks up. And that results in some high resolution cameras recording their lower resolution substreams instead of the mainstream. And for multi-lens cameras, there's no way to configure which lens is shown or add the camera multiple times to record each lens. And depending on the camera's brand, I found that some streams were buggy at best, like RealLink, and seemed to be putting a lot of strain on the NVR's processor. Again, this feature is only a week old, so the potential for big things is there, but you shouldn't run out and buy a Unify Protect appliance to add your third-party two cameras to yet. And if you want to use all the best parts of Unify Protect, you still need Unify cameras, and that's probably going to be the case for the foreseeable future. As always, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, but I do have links down in the descriptions for all the cameras and Protect appliances in this video. And as always, I appreciate when you use those links since as an affiliate I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. Thank you so much to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support on my channel and if you're interested in supporting my channel please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing and as always thanks for watching the hookup.